So, I wanted to do a finale to the special design series, and I will have that playlist in the description below. It was basically a bit where I went over all the specials, both Splatoon games, and how good of a job I think they did. So this is going to be a little tier list ranked purely based off how well designed they are. That's going to let me give out some final thoughts and if some opinions have changed and all of that stuff. So I actually want to start this with the A tier of specials, which is good design but some missteps. So a bit of a different order here. But Inkstorm is the first one to cover here. My opinion of Inkstorm hasn't shifted that much over time. I really like the concept on launch, and in truth, it kind of earned it some bonus points here. The idea of launching a rainstorm onto your opponents is just cool. As a whole, though, it's still pretty simple. I don't like how much space it denies, and I don't like how simple it is. I do think there's a place for simple specials that don't do a lot when you launch them, but I think it's not done perfectly here and I would have appreciated some form of control. Maybe like curving the storm path a bit or adjusting the speed a bit. Something like that I think could have made it better. But as a whole, if they want to move this to the third game, I will not really care that much. So Bomb Rush is an interesting one to talk about because this is a special I did my Splatoon 3 special concepts on. And basically what I wanted there is what I want for Bomb Rush. Give it more stuff to do with like multiple bombs and stuff like that. And also make it a bit more vulnerable with something like a larger hurt box. I just think Bomb Rush, like Inkstorm, needs a little bit more complexity, a little more things that you can do it just needs to be a bit less spammable and a bit more let people do some more big brain iq plays give them a bit more power of the special here and i think it would be fair as a whole i don't really hate it though i'm torn on ink strike this almost moved up one but i just don't really think it works as well as a whole as it should have. I don't know if I'm really the biggest hater of the full map's worth of range. Part of me doesn't really like it, and I would have preferred it was some large radius around you, but I don't hate it either. The strike itself could be painted over. I don't know. There's not a lot to say about it. It's fine. I would have preferred a little more to it, but I'm okay with it how it is. Ink Zuka. So, out of all the specials that have been turned into Splatoon 3 1, Zuka is the one I think is going to jump up here really really easily because Zuka's only real problem is that it's a bit extreme. Shooting these giant, fast, weird hitboxy tornadoes is just stupid, especially with the amount you get. The special had to be 220p in Splatoon 1 and on many weapons, it was like a heavy depletion, so you would lose a bunch of the special points as well as a method to balance it. But I mean, it's hard to really talk about it in a negative light because it's like, okay, Splatoon 3 looks like it fixed it. It's less extreme, you only get three shots. Fairly vulnerable at close range, which is cool. I like the amount of deployment time it has. I like the lack of paint and options and being dependent on your sub weapon. So, I mean, it's fine, just some missteps. And this is probably the special that I think most people are going to disagree with my placement on, which is Bubbler. Like I said in my video about Bubbler and what I said during my Missiles vs. Ink Armor section, which I'll have more to say about later, I think Bubbler is fine. I think the instant activation invincibility is dumb, but everything else is good. Like I said before, if it gave you HP and it had deployment time, it would be a perfectly fine great design special. The real only problems with it are the instant activation and invincibility. Outside of that, everything else is really smart. Having a chain of teammates is smart. How the duration is handled is smart. The knockback is smart. A lot of good decisions just made a little bit too extreme. I know a lot of people are debating on if we should give players HP or not in Splatoon, and I honestly think Splatoon 3 will only give like individual HPs rather than a team-based thing, which I do think is the right decision, but I do think chainable team HP can be done correctly in Splatoon. It's just very hard, and I think Bubbler compared to Armor was the much closer one at getting to that design. All right, and a more interesting tier up next, good ideas, poor execution, and this is where Splashdown will be moved up. So my original video on the worst special design in Splatoon history actually features two of these three specials in this tier, and I think Splashdown is the one I've changed my opinion on the most. I still don't like it because it's not intuitive. You see Splashdown, it looks like a panic button. It looks like it's made to kill opponents. That's what it's been showcased as. And so they did try to change that. I don't think they did it very well, but they tried. They went to change it around the middle of the game's lifespan from a panic button special to a special counter. 
special, which I mean would be okay if the game rewarded you for doing so, but it doesn't. One of the patch notes I hit the most in Splatoon 2's history is the 25% special reduction because this is a tool to tell players it's okay to die in splashdown keep panicking it you'll lose less of it it's better to die when you pop splashdown than it is to die without popping it you're literally encouraging panicked buttons if we toss that aside is the idea of a special to counter other specials cool yeah does it fit with how splashdown looks not really. Can you make it better? Yeah, I think it could maybe go up here if you made it so it rewarded you for canceling stuff. Like I mentioned the idea of maybe canceling bombs gives you two points for special. Bubble five, baller ten, etc. But they needed to change the incentive to more where it's like, you want to land these and destroy other things. But nothing in the game really gives you that amount of incentive. So it doesn't look like that. If it had that, I think it could be a serviceable special. However, as we'll get to later, I think there was a better special to counter other specials that was done, and so I don't see a place for Splashdown even in its current form. Bubble Blower. So this isn't going to be me bitching about the bubble combo the entire time, even though that's a f***ing horrible thing about the special that should never have existed. It's not the worst thing ever. Bubble Shields that both players can shoot at naturally gives a lot of interaction to both sides. I like that idea. I think it's just a bit too extreme. Three bubbles that can all explode. For whatever reason, the center hit a bubble does 250 damage. You get three of those, by the way, which is utterly ridiculous. The idea of mini shields that both people get to influence is all right in theory. I think it's very dependent on the other specials in the game. There needs to be a good amount of specials that specialize uh -huh, in dealing with this because main weapons don't deal with it enough. That being said, I think the idea of deployable shields could honestly be done better than this. This is kind of jank. It still has kind of bubble explosions. It's kind of stupid. And I think Bubble Shield in Splatoon 3, the big bubbler, looks like a way better version of it. And I think that's just what it should be. So moving down, we have the bad design, but saveable. And now we can have missiles. So originally when I made the special design series, I said missiles were good special design. And this is the special that has changed the most, from my opinion. I still do agree with a lot of what I said at the time. Using missiles is 50 times better than using armor. Everything I said there 100% stands. And secondly, that the main problem with missiles was, of course, their spammability. Which, yes, that part is still true as well. What I have changed my opinion on is, is it okay that there's a special that can displace the entire team for free? Is that okay? And my answer to that is a resounding no. I don't think displacement should be this good and this spread out. I think it's too much and it's too annoying, so I think that's a problem. The other problem I didn't talk about as much is using missiles. Now, missiles are a special you want to capitalize on when you use it. You want to pop it and then follow up with it. But how missile range works leads to its intuitive nature being to use it as far away as possible, which is why you have Neo Splooshes, Missile Spamming, and Spawn. That design is unintuitive, and it builds bad support habits, and I don't think it's okay. Can you salvage the special? Maybe. So my thoughts on salvaging missiles after my full opinions on it were, okay, so limit the range to a smaller area so you can only displace multiple people if they're on top of each other, or limit the range to some extent. Maybe just have it be like, a tunnel or something instead of kind of coming down from the sky like a little smaller range and if you lock on a people in that range then you would launch stuff at them that would move them out the way and now you can see i'm slowly describing killer whale 5.1 <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what that is. So like, yeah, there's no reason for Missile to exist. I think Whale 5.1 is just a hybrid of Whale Ray and Missiles. And everything good Missiles did is just in that special. So screw this special. It was saveable, but it's most saveable by turning it into something else. So bye bye Missile. So Kraken had some good ideas. The special is dodgeable. It's tameable by shooting at it. And it has end lag that's punishable. Those three things things are great. The problem, like with Bubbler, instant activation, invincibility, and in addition to it, a one-shot. 
I've heard a lot of concepts for a Splatoon 3 Kraken, and honestly, I think there's a decent chance we get a Splatoon 3 Kraken. A, because they've been showing a preference at Splatoon 1 specials to port, but B, because Kraken is one of the most iconic and cool-looking specials. And I think they can do it, making it more so the Kraken pushes people back and take resources rather than killing, and something that's still very punishable via taming and waiting it out. I think it could work. So that's why I put it here. How Kraken functions in Splatoon 1 is bad design, but I could see a fixed one being up here if you were to tweak how exactly it works. That being said, making a fun, fair, balanced Kraken is really hard. I just think we're going to see them try to do it. So the three worst designs in Splatoon history are all Splatoon 2 specials. Armor. Now, armor is literally the opposite of bubble. The idea of having it only give a small amount of HP and have a two second delay are great, but everything else about it is terrible. Except for that it gives away your location. I guess that's not a horrible idea. Bubbler's design is the way you chain it, blah, blah, blah. Everything but the invincibility and instant activation is dumb. This has everything besides the HP is dumb. I think the way to fix armor is to just turn it into bubble. You should not have a special that chains across the entire map. That's just not how special should work. It shouldn't just be a right stick chain to your whole team. There is no agency for the special user. It breaks a ton of weapons in the game. It's not good. Baller is an HP special done horrible, and funny enough, like with Kraken and Bubble, I think this was done worse than the original variant. Again, less broken, but Kraken had counterplay in the sense that you would tame it and then you would kill the Kraken afterward for it. That would be your kind of thing. But Baller has yeah, stupid pain explosion that can't really be dealt with, which, while it's situational, is dumb. It's still a panic button, just a less reliable one, and it's just an HP shred. Booyah has you trapped in the air, Crab Tank has you exposed whenever you shoot. Baller has nothing like that whatsoever. And when Baller was really good, it was absolute hell, because it was just a panic button, free damage, free mobility, it did too many things. So their solution in this game is to just make it bad. Like, that's all they've done. So now it's just a bad panic button. So this special isn't as bad as the previous two, but I hate to say it. Echo Locator and Bad Design. So, admittedly, this one is a bit of personal preference. I think if I were to throw out my location I don't like thing, it would probably be here in Bad Ideas but Salvageable. But I'm putting it in Bad Design. And the reason is because, again, it's a lot like armor. It's instant activation, chains to everyone on the other team, regardless of distance, lasts, etc. It's way too simple. The effect is annoying. I don't think it feels that great to use. I mean, if you're an E-Leader player, it's kind of cool. I just don't like that chaining. There's not much back and forth. That being said, you can look at these specials and you can see some positive ideas here. Like, armor being less extreme, baller being shreddable. It's okay to some extent. There were good ideas here. The base concept for this was just a bad idea. From the very beginning. I was one of the only people in Splatoon 2's launch to be worried about Ray. Everyone saw that and just called it bad, but I saw a nightmare. Either it's bad and it feels horrible, or it's good and it's a nightmare for the game. And eventually they made it good by giving it beams. What was the concept here? Let's have a controllable, aimable, long-duration laser that goes across the whole stage and through walls. What are we doing? This is a bullet hell. We have made it. So your only option is to try to dodge the ray, and if the ray user is good enough, you won't. So okay, if they can't dodge ray, what do we do? Oh, uh, you, you have to use the missile to display. Oh, you have to use the armor to give HP. Ooh, another HP special. Oh, uh, we can try to move it out of the way. Oh, no. So the counter is to throw specials at yourselves and to throw them at your team. It's just not good. I don't have much to say about it because I think everything I said in my Stingray video makes sense. And this is also the special design that, yeah, A, they stop giving weapons to, and B, has the most drastic changes. You can literally look at the patch notes and see the cluster without knowing anything about the game. It just looks bad right off the bat. Everything I said in my worst special design video there is accurate about Ray. There's nothing more to add. All right, now let's get to the best specials. Booyah Bomb. This special is a special made to counter other specials. It's an HP one done right. 
Because you get in the air, you get protected, but you're still very vulnerable, you can still be shot down. There are two main problems I have with it, which is how its HP interacts with weapons, because I think that other guns should be able to shred it better than they do. Stuff like blasters and rollers, for example, should be able to do more damage to it. And then decaying HP so it can't stall in the air as much. Those two things are really my only problems with it. The special's easy to paint over. It counters other specials very well. It's very much this game's counter special done correctly. And I really appreciate how well that it was done. Inkjet. So another fairly simple one. It's just you're in the sky, you get to shoot at people. This is a very back and forth special, especially when armor does not exist. I think it would need a bit more tools if it were to be brought to the third game because I don't think it should be able to be chained HP. That kind of ruins its dynamic. But it's a very nice risk reward. It opens up new movement options with its verticality. The whole angle you have in general is really unique and I think that's a great perspective to give players. But at the same time, you're still slow, you're still vulnerable, it's still hard to use. It feels like both sides get a valid amount of options and have things they can do with it. It just needs some minor tweaking in order for it to work by itself without as much help from other specials. That's all it really needs. Whale is the best simple special in Splatoon's history. It's just dependent on your timing, where you're aiming it, and where you're positioned. Everything a simple special should depend on. The effect is a little strong, completely walling out an area. I think Whale 5.1 looks to do it better with minor damage, but that's the only complaint I have for it. You have a fair bit of slowness, it doesn't last too long, so it's more about your game sense. It's not complicated in any way. There's not much to say about it, honestly. It's just good. Okay, Ultra Stamp is the best Splatoon special design we have seen so far. There is a ton of options for the individual user. You have a jump swing, a rush mode, a ground swing, and a throw. It blocks shots, but only from a specific angle. There is plenty of counterplay. There's plenty of options for the special user. It works out great. The throw mode is situational, but it's always solid. And because you get to do it at the end, there's always a reason for you to try and throw it. I think it's a little underpowered, but at the end of the day, that's not really a game design thing. That's a game balance thing. That's about it. There's plenty of options for both sides more than in any other special. There's a lot of agency. Everything was really thought about it. And on top of that, it's a bomb counter, which is something that the Splatoon series really needs. The ability to eat bombs or to tank specific specials is really cool, and I like it. I have no complaints about Stamp. If any special were to be brought to Splatoon 3, this is my number one pick. It would work out so well, and it's also a shame because two of these specials in the top four, in the good special design, are on five weapons each. That's just sad, and I think a lot of it does come with the experience, though. These specials were added last. They're going to be done better than the other ones, and I think they can be a good indicator of how Splatoon 3 specials will work. I've said before on Twitter that Ultra Stamp is literally a Splatoon 3 special in Splatoon 2. Its design is closer to the ones we've seen in the trailers than it is to the rest of this stuff. So, honestly, my rating of a 7 out of 10 special design for both games still stands. I think overall these specials don't break the game super badly. There's only one special that was done horribly wrong. And I think Splatoon 3 is going to do them way better. And I'm excited for the future if Ultra Stamp and Booyah Bomb are any indicator of it. So that's the finale of Splatoon special design. See you guys in Splatoon 3.